Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you our new plugin, it's called Zebra, it's a multi-objective optimization using agents, uh, agent based design and flocking. Our plugin has uh, a few main components, mainly it relies on the engine component that calculates every iteration, a recursive one, lively. We have the properties, it has a time step where you control the time. We will set it to zero point zero two. Neighborhood radius, alignment, cohesion, separation, and separation distance. I'm going to be showing you these now. Um, also, we have the <laughs> agents. This one controls the initial speed and the maximum speed and the initial points, the starting points, these points. These points. Where, where I put them, I can actually control that. Can put it anywhere actually. Uh, and then we have the behaviors. We add them. Uh, it's it's, l it's not mandatory to add them. Here. It's it's like optional. You can have you can have them flocking without any added behaviors. Behaviors mainly mainly are attracting, repulsing, attractive curve or a full point or full curve or a, or a wind. Like we can have a wind drive the agents toward a certain point. Then we have the containers, it's where it's the boundary where we can keep the agents. It can be a B rip, a box, or a mesh, anything actually. In 3D, also we have um, a, a container that's outside. Container outside is like a repulsor, but a precise one, and it can be any form, like a, 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 any form, basically. Any, any mesh can be repulsive from, which is not. Uh, which is something new we, we are introducing here. So let's start with the flocking. So uh, if you start a flock, it's going to be going towards each other, going towards it, towards each other, each other. As you can see, <coughs> there's also this component that records everything and puts puts it in a line, so you can see the results live. So if you look at me, you, are, you can see that the agents are doing three things. They're going towards a certain goal, and they're going towards each other, that's called cohesion. And going towards a goal is called alignment. And when they get towards it, each other, they start to go away again. And that's what we call separation. So these are the main three uh, behaviors of any agent, uh, agent we have. We also have other uh, parameters such as separation distance. Separation distance controls like the radius of the flock itself. If we like make it smaller, you start seeing the agents going really close to each other compared to this compared to this one. Yeah, it's it's uh, it looks. You can see it on the display lively. You can see how close they get when I. Uh, diminish the separation distance. Also, there is something called the neighborhood radius. I can let me clear that. Neighborhood radius is controls like the radius the agents go uh, together with uh, together the, the the radius where the agents start to get together. Like if I increase that, you start seeing less. Uh, Less population, like, they start becoming one uh, closer, closer, uh, closer clusters. See, if as I increase it, we have much closer cl clusters. If I make it less, now we have much smaller clusters. Yeah, I keep it around one point five or something. Okay, so we have the alignment. I can add more agents to make this more clear. One of uh, the strengths of our uh, plugin is that we can have a lot of, a lot, a lot of uh, agents. Like now, I'm going with 200, and it's still going fast and good. As you can see. It's going towards each other, and I can decrease that. I can make it 
less cohesive. Okay, can make it give a value of a 10 or something. Now I have to start separating, just separating. Let me clear that up. Yeah, as you can see, it just separates a lot. Separates a lot and goes so far from each other. If I increase that and make it the same value, and if I increase the alignment to 1, you start seeing a more straightforward something. Straightforward and less. Uh, And less movement in the uh, flock itself. And uh, this way we control the behavior as much as you want. So I'll just go back. Control Z, control Z, control Z. And you'll see, start seeing again the how the flock goes. Let me decrease that to 1. So basically everything changes live here. So it gives you a lot a lot of control over that the flock you want to control. And you can still keep it going on and you just clear the data. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce you to some of the behaviors you have here. I'm not going to go in a lot of detail, but you're going to get the hang of it anyway. So basically we have the attractor behavior. Behavior, let me show you the attractors first. Okay, so these are my attractors. The one colored in green, one's colored in green, as you can see. If I add that in the middle of the calculation, start seeing something very interesting. Right now, they are attracting towards a certain point. And let me let me clear that again. If I if I make it choose to go to the nearest point, each point goes to the nearest nearest attractor. Which is cool. If I give it a reset, start seeing this a certain behavior in it. I can decrease it and give it make the flocking look more appealing. You see that the flock is going in its own behavior and then goes towards its closest subtractor. Okay, and then I can show you a, a reverse to it, it's called the repulsor. Repulsor does the, the exact opposite. So the plugin goes on its own, everything going well. So as you can see, it goes a bit close to the repulsors and that means I should increase the value of the multiplier multiplier is basically 1 so if I increase this to uh, 4 or 5 or 8 or 10 we really start seeing how the agents will go away from it as much as possible you can see the agents are avoiding it avoiding it trying to avoid it as much as they can So the multiplier here controls how strong the behavior is. And you can see gaps in the middle, that's where the repulsors are. And then we have an attractor curve. It's a curve that attracts to the closest position from the start point. say this yet. So every part of flock goes to a, a point. Let me let me take this off. Goes to its closest point from the starting position. I already said that I can, uh, as I said before about the mesh container, I can contain outside it, so I have this mesh here, and I 
I want it to reorganize itself after it meets this mesh. I don't want I don't want it to get inside the mesh. I want it to face the obstacle, get away from it, and then get back to where, where we were. So if I give it a reset and we, and I add the mesh outside container, this also works as a repulsor. But um, it's a precise one and it can be anything. So if I give it a pause here, if I give this a pause, let me clear this up. And the mesh does not show it here. As you can see, patients are trying the, their best to organize themselves after the, they need the mesh. This is, is one of the things I said about the combinations, that you can combine multi-behaviors. Like you can have this uh, mesh inside and have, uh, have you, can, you can have any other behavior with it. You can even add the wind to it or if you want to. And how it all reacts together is based on the multipliers. You, you just tinker with the multipliers and see what goes well with you. But the wind would be very... Uh, like looking, looking uh, very clear in this one. Give you other example, you can combine anything with the, with the other. Like I can add a repulsor and the wind for an example. And this is the vector wind. Uh, if you look at the wind vector, it's uh, going from this point to this point. If I add this on its own, it should look like this. The clock is going on, but it's a bit tilted to the right. If I add the multiplier more, it will just go more and more. And as it hits the box, it goes, it bounces. So let me add some this. Let me add the repulsors we had here. So let, let us have them avoid them at the, at the same time. Let me reset this. You start seeing something interesting here. The agents are trying to get away from that. the repulsors as much as they can and following the wind wind path I gave them this works with the environment design and stuff like that and then I'm going to show you some uh, follow motion for example I have a set of points where I can follow so, um, it's the same points in the act trackers. I'm going to follow them by order I, I put them in. So, if I put them, I, I need to add more to the values of the multiplier of it. It is not going enough. Okay. Reset. Okay, I need to add more to multiplier.
increase the number of points for the C. So let me give this a reset. See the points start going to the order you put them in. And goes to the next point. And then to the third point. And if looping here is set to true, it's going to keep on going from the first, second, third, first, second, third. If I make it, give it false, it just goes one loop. Okay, the same goes for a curve. I have a curve here. This curve. This one seems a bit much easier for us. The thing is, if it doesn't go well, you, you can increase the multiplier to see uh, to make it more clear for you. Sometimes the multipliers are interfere with each other. Okay, so there was a small error. There are two. Uh, uh, there are the factors that are not showing. That's why it wasn't going very well. So let's show this again. Kind of follows the curve. We can even make it more precise than this. Okay. Go from the start again. It's looping because loop is set to true. Basically goes on and on. If I clear the ladder, you can see it's going towards the curve. If we take this one off, let us let me show you one last thing. This is a basic behavior. I have something I want to add. There is uh, this mesh manipulator or mesh forming where a mesh reacts to the agents, the mesh reacts and moves inwards or outwards uh, according to the agents around it, surrounding it. Let me show you. Okay. Here we go. Turn this on. First, I need to make it false and then press the button. Show this and then make it true. And we react, we start reacting. Let's shift this to 83. The more I add this, the more the, the faster my calculation is. And as you can see, it reacts. I'm leaving this. This is before and this is after. They react. We can lower the threshold. The threshold controls like when it will start moving. This is about it for our tutorial. I can show you a few uh, few things. Like maybe uh, show you the stories and show you how it will, how the agents will go inside. Just a bit fast. Okay, so this is a mesh. Let me set one mesh. Internalize it. Leave it. And here we have a mesh here. 
set the multiplier to 5. So, let me turn this off. If we start anything, in couple display mesh edges, edges. You'll see that it will rebound back if we have this as a container. Now let's start plotting. It's a bit going a bit far, I can increase the multiplier a bit more. Make it 10. Make it a bit faster around here. Maybe make it somewhere around 20. See the start in shape, starting to get in shape. Usually, I think it's around 50 where it's uh, it's more precise. Yes, it's around there. You see the flux uh, somewhere. You can even get some form with the flux. And modify. Uh, to your needs. So this is about it for our tutorial. I hope you understood most of our uh, interface and I hope you go away with it. And thank you.